Upwards and dips down very... Every four years, the whole world stops to witness what Pele called the beautiful game. is tremendous and every player knows what their country expects of them to win the deafening roar from a ball well struck silence of a missed chance, the fear of letting your country down. This is the world's biggest stage. How far are these players willing to go when billions of eyes around the world are watching? There's not a team in football that faces more pressure in the World Cup than Brazil. Brazil is a country where football is part of the culture, is part of society. Everybody loves football, everybody roots for a football team. Every child dreams of becoming a footballer. The truth is that football stars are born in Brazil. Amazing players are discovered every season. Today, if you tell anyone you are Brazilian, everyone will say, Oh, Brazil, football, Ronaldo, Romário, Ronaldinho, Pelé. And they remember those football players. In any tournament that the national team is in, there will be huge expectations of winning and playing well, always. So a player that makes it onto the team already knows of these expectations and responsibilities. So what really matters is to win. It's a lot of pressure and responsibility, but good things also come along with all of that. This film tells the story of players from around the world who know what it means to represent their country in the World Cup, while at the same time holding on to what is most important in all of our lives. In 2010, all eyes were on the African continent when it hosted its first World Cup Finals. In the late 70s, football legend Pelé predicted that an African team would win the World Cup before the year 2000. But despite world-class talent, the results have fallen well short of that dream for African teams. But Africa has had its chances. In 1990, a talented Cameroon squad shocked the world when it made it to the quarterfinals. Iyong Ino of Cameroon remembers that World Cup well. Every young Cameroonian with the history of Cameroonian football after the 1990 World Cup just had a dream, this passion to one day play football at a top level. So it wasn't different for me. I always thought that I could, I could get to there. I came to IX 2008, and uh, from that time, it, it's been very exciting. It was a little bit strange for me because I just moved from Africa and then getting into 
uh, such a big club and already playing in the Europa League and getting into Champions League. So it was, it, was, it was a very big step for me. Shortly after Ino's transition to Ajax, he got a call to be part of the Cameroon national team. And from there, he earned a position on the 2010 World Cup team. I was excited to be with the national team going to the World Cup. But as a team, the objective was to at least make it to the quarterfinals. Cameroon had a disappointing start to the 2010 World Cup when they lost to Japan 1-0. In that particular game against Japan, that we started the game very sloppy, and uh, Japan got the opportunity and scored a goal out of nothing. And at the end of it all, it's a World Cup game, and he will get the chance and put it in, makes a difference, and we, we finally lost the game. The game against Denmark was uh, for us a kind of do or die game. We knew that we had to win that game on all costs. We scored the first goal, got good shape in the game. And then just later on, out of <laughs> one moment of slaps of concentration, we slipped and they equalized in the first half, so it was 1 1. And towards that period before the half time, I, I got a knock of the ball on my eye. I couldn't see properly with that eye, so I had to go out. And later on, when some test was done, it was a little bit rupturing and the eye was bleeding, so I had to recover from that. The injury ended Ino's World Cup, and after another goal from Denmark in the second half, the Cameroon team was eliminated from the tournament. It's a little bit of It is from that where it's gemaakt zit vanmiddag. Oor, mooi voorzet, it is 1-0 for Utrecht. Mulenga. Jacob Mulenga is one of the top goal scorers in the Dutch league, playing for FC Utrecht. But Jacob has never had the chance to play on the World Cup stage, since his country Zambia has never qualified. But Jacob knows what football means to Zambia. He was a part of the national team in the Africa Cup of Nations in 2008. I got selected for the national team. It was scary. I was nervous, I, it was just a whole new world to me. I'd never been in front of the whole public eye that much before that, and I had no idea what playing for the national team was. Zambia had some difficulties that year. In the group stage, they were up against both Egypt and Cameroon, the two teams that would go on to play in the final. Zambia never advanced past the group stage and football fans all over Zambia were disappointed. There's another side to football people don't really know, like the whole stress, the pressure, the higher you go, the, the worse it becomes. The higher you go, the worse every time you miss one ball, you have thousands of people calling you names or calling you stupid. Every time you score one goal, you have millions saying you're the greatest. He brings in the Crocs. Jacob, it's a ball! Jack Mulenga, good for Zambia! Team Zambia has been improving their game, and they were named best team in Africa when they won the African Cup in 2012. Unfortunately, Jacob was out with an injury during that tournament, but he has recovered, and he's once again scoring goals for his country. one new score, and the fans was a sea of green. And Jacob Mulenga again saying, can I hear that again? <laughs> I'm not doing what for Zambia, I am scoring. I know I'm someone who's extremely blessed and who can do anything in football because I know my strength doesn't come from me exactly, it comes from above, so I know there's no limit to what I can do. So talking about the, the pressure which we encounter, I believe this pressure is for everybody now. Uh, in a way, they think uh, footballers and other majors, athletes and, and artists, they have much more pressure or politician because they are more seen. But I believe everyone at every level goes through the same pressure. Now, for me personally, handling this pressure is just trusting the Lord. We have this encouragement knowing that God's purpose and God's plan is ultimate, is higher than what we see. When I understand that the life I'm living is no more my own. It's a life which he has died for, and he has exchanged his life for my life and given me uh, a life of peace and a life of joy. In 2007, VfB Stuttgart won the German Bundesliga title for the first time in 15 years. Stuttgart are German champions! 
It was a wonderful experience when we very surprisingly became German champions. Especially after the game when 200,000 people celebrated with us. It was a huge party, a huge moment and I'll never forget it. Cacao was born in Brazil, but he has spent the majority of his career in Germany scoring goals for VfB Stuttgart. In 2009, Cacao was granted dual citizenship in both Brazil and Germany. He was even given the nickname Helmut by a teammate who insisted that every German needs a proper German name. I'm comfortable here. My family is comfortable here. We have learned the language. But we haven't forgotten our roots. I always say I'm 100% Brazilian and 100% German. Soon after he became a German citizen, Cacao was called up to be part of the renowned German national team. It was a great feeling. And it was such an honor to play for Germany for the first time. I wanted to give it my all so that I could give something in return for the recognition they had given me. As a child, I always watched the World Cup. It was the highlight of football. I followed it with a lot of passion. And suddenly, I was right in the middle of it. I was right there on the pitch. And all the attention that was directed at us, that was really something special. When Kakao was given the chance to play in South Africa in 2010, it was an experience every footballer dreams of. One highlight of the tournament was the game against Uruguay for third place. That was a game I got to play in and I wanted to play in. We won the game and after the game we were handed medals. Playing for Germany has taught Kakao that the Germans always expect excellence from their home squad. The pressure to win is constant. Football moves the masses. It gives people role models. People live out their emotions and they go to the stadiums hoping to see their team win so that they can feel better. You always want to be successful. You always want to win. I always want to win. That's just the type of person I am. I don't like losing, but things don't always work out. And that's also how life is. And I have to say that God gives me the strength, even in a difficult situation. When you're not winning or not playing well, He is always there. And He gives us that joy, that feeling that we are valuable. And it was a relief for me that God doesn't demand anything from me but my heart and my life, just as I am. And I'm very thankful for the way that he accepts me. I know that what I have today is temporary. I know it will one day be over. But if you live with him, believe in his word, and live your life according to it, then you will remain forever. And that is the source of my hope. Just a boy. Oh. 
what to say, but in a sense, Guzan deserves that because he has been blameless, sometimes brilliant. Inside it comes now back inside, Andre Santos honking it. Andre right there, pass the ball. What a save for Guzan. Tremendous. For me, it started early. I really wanted to pursue being a professional footballer. When you hear your name called on the on the team sheet on a match day, the excitement, the uh, the energy that goes through your body, I mean, this is what it was all about for me. Brad Guzan of the United States has always had an exceptional talent as a goalkeeper. He got his start in Major League Soccer and won the honor of MLS Goalkeeper of the Year just two years into his professional career. It was a, a year that I really improved and, and made strides and physically and then to, to be honored by your peers and coaches and, and media you know really gave me the idea of maybe you can go to Europe and, and be successful and, and make it in, in England or, or a top league in Europe. As a matter of fact England did want the American goalkeeper and in 2008 Brad was invited to the English Premier League to play for Aston Villa. Things didn't go so well at first. Here, potentially Guzan if Luis gets it right. Lampard also behind the ball, but it's David Luis. Oh, wonderful! That's just a brilliant strike. That rise and dip into the part of the uh, goal that the keeper isn't covering. There is simply nothing he can do. It was do. A, a trying four years for me. Um, the first four years of being in England, it was it was difficult because you'd play a game, you'd do well, but then the next week you'd find yourself on the bench. Um, and so it was that inconsistent football that I was experiencing and, and I was looking for that consistency. Even though Brad had great performances when he did get to play, he still hadn't made it to the number one spot as keeper. You know, obviously everyone wants to play. You know, that's, that's part of being a professional, it's part of being a footballer. Everyone wants to play, but at the same time, you know, especially as a goalkeeper, only one player can play. You just have to keep fighting. I knew that if I just kept going, um, that I, w I would be given an opportunity at some point. That opportunity finally came in 2012 when Aston Villa head coach Paul Lambert promoted Brad to number one keeper. Brad is now a key member uh, of the squad, very popular with, with the other players, uh, and he's turning in fantastic performances for us. Another rather exuberant save by Guzan to keep out Remy. Samba, edge of the box, yet another save from Guzan to deny Samba. I thought it was in. That was stunning. My first international appearance, it was the first time in all of my career that I was actually nervous for a game and, you know, going onto the field, hearing the, the national anthem, wearing the, the stars and the stripes. I get goosebumps now talking about it. It's, it's an unbelievable feeling, you know, being able to represent your country. The, the sport of football in this country is, has gotten much bigger over the years. And so it's a, it's a different type of buzz and, and passion that American fans bring. games you want to be a part of as a professional footballer. You want to help your team, you want to help your country. And as exciting as it is, there, there definitely comes a, a little bit of pressure with it. For me, my personal life, my faith life, and my, my sport life, they, they all come together because I, I think they have to. I think that's just natural and that's that's how I get through my personal life that's how I get through my professional life um, is 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 following Christ and um, you know he helps me through the tough times as I said it hasn't always been a, a rosy road to uh, success Brad's future with Aston Villa and the United States national team isn't entirely clear but it's his perseverance and his faith in God that keep him looking forward not backward he has a plan for all of us, and there's going to be times when you're on the losing side, you're on the winning side. It's, it's how you handle those situations with his guidance. You become stronger as an individual and as a follower um, through the difficult, difficult times. If it wasn't for a brilliant save from Guzan, QPR would have taken the lead. That's an outstanding save. Top draw, top corner save from the American. The experience of playing for Brazil is hard to put into words because you go through so many emotions. My childhood dream was to play just once for the Brazilian national team. The Bible says that God has much more for us than we can ask or imagine. That has been my experience. I achieved things I never imagined I could. I have already played in three World Cups for Brazil.
Kaká's first World Cup with Brazil was in 2002, the year they became champions. Getting to lift the cup is a unique moment for any football player who has the opportunity to do so. I was 20 years old and the youngest player on the team. It really was a gift from God because I would have never imagined that at age 20 I would have played in a World Cup and won. The 2006 World Cup was a big test for Brazil. As defending champions, the pressure was on them to defend their title and play like the best team in the world. My memories of 2006 are good ones because it was when I scored my first World Cup goal against Croatia. But it also left a feeling of sadness because the 2006 team was very talented, with incredible players, really fantastic. But we failed to achieve the main goal of any Brazilian team, which is to win the World Cup. I see disappointments as part of God's plan, because I think God really has a purpose for everything, and there's a time for all things. That's the way I deal with things that did not turn out as I wanted. I always look at Bible passages where Jesus, my greatest example, went through moments of pressure. He knew God was in control of everything, and that's similar to what I do in moments of pressure. I continue to remind myself of the convictions of my faith, of the things I know, and I pray, knowing that God is in control. I believe that Jesus has nothing to do with money, with fame, or with success. Those were a gift that He gave me, the gift of playing football. I truly believe Jesus does not care much for Kaká, the football player. He's more concerned about Ricardo, who I am, and the person that I am. To know that regardless of the situation, good or bad, that there's a God who loves us. That makes all the difference to me. It's no hollow phrase. Football is the beautiful game, and the World Cup captures all the energy, the emotion, and the power of the sport. The players in this film have been blessed with the opportunity to play football with the whole world as their audience. With this comes immense pressure, and it is in those moments in the spotlight when they derive strength from their faith in a God who loves them. You know, God loves everyone, and, and you, you just have to be able to, to open yourself to Him and allow Him into your life. I started talking about faith with my brother, and through that I began to see that I needed God, that I needed His love. That's when I decided to live my life with Him. As a young child growing up, uh, in African context you would say, uh, very few parents could provide everything for their kids. And I, I was in a good place. My dad was working, we're living well in terms of that standard. But I realized, even though all of that was in place, something was still missing as a young man. It looked like I was in search of something, which I couldn't quite find, it, neither with friends, nor in school, nor at my home. It looked like there was something that I really needed to know. The message I have to share with you today is that, unfortunately, the relationship of man with God was broken because of sin. God, through His love for us, sent His only Son, Jesus, to die for you and me, for our sins. Three days later, Jesus became alive again, and He's still alive today. He's the God of our lives. I think everyone needs Christ in their life. His sacrifice, um, you know, that, that He has given the, the ultimate sacrifice for us here on earth um, is, is enormous. When you recognize that Jesus died on the cross, paid the price for you and has taken care of your sin and you accept him into your heart, it's by faith. Because something like, whoa, how can I just say that? And how is it gonna happen? It's not up to you, it's up to him. He's already done it. Once you do that by faith, you automatically become a new creation. It's in the confession of the Lord Jesus Christ that you can receive that eternal life which He paid on the cross. That's how I got it. And that's how anybody 
can get it. It's not saying it won't go into, you're not going to have challenge. You are going to have challenges as a Christian, and you're going to have troubles as a Christian. But you know, in all that, you know you're going to be victorious. Some people make it look difficult, but when I read my Bible, it's very simple. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it says, If you would believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, that God raised him from the dead, and you would confess with your mouth his lordship, it says, you shall be saved. And that's what can happen to anybody who makes Jesus the Lord of their life.